Hi, welcome. My name is Paul Morrissey from Hitachi. Uh, this is a hands-on lab orientation uh, specific to VVOLs and VASA on Hitachi storage and conversion. Uh, this will be the short 10-minute uh, section, and if you want more details, uh, look at the 30-minute video that follows. So from an orientation perspective, these are topics we'll, we'll, we'll go through today. Uh, we'll give, I'll give you a quick tip. I'll do a flab introduction and demo across the installation of the VAS provider. We'll give a quick view into integrated replication services, which is currently in beta and should be GA shortly. And we'll give a peek at the inter relationship between VVOLs and containers and VCF. And we'll finish with uh, some tip on migration from VMFS to VVOLs. So first, from a deployment tip perspective, uh, if you search for VVOLs Attachee, this will bring up a, a link to a quick start reference guide. Uh, this is an excellent document uh, that was recently published to give both b mins and storage mins a good overview of the Attachee VAS provider and how it gets deployed and their responsibilities in each area and give them sufficient details to get a good understanding of the infrastructure. So from a deployment perspective, the Apache implementation uses a VAS provider appliance, which gets deployed into a management cluster. Uh, just like NSX, uh, we, we in, recommend you deploy it either in VS for HA mode or VS for fault tolerant mode. The VAS provider itself can register against multiple storage systems. So we've got one VAS provider can manage multiple storage systems. And also the same VAS provider can connect to multiple vCenters as well. So pretty low footprint for large environments. On the right hand side, we have a web user interface. This is the interface that administrators will use to create storage containers, uh, set capabilities, and other related topics, which we'll briefly talk about. When you deploy the OVF, uh, as part of deploying the OVF, you get a, this template will come to the section where you enter various parameters. And this really just entering the network information for the VP, uh, which vCenter you're connecting to, and also uh, relevant host names. After you deploy the OVF, the next step will be to go ahead and go to the web user interface. And as I mentioned, this web user interface provides a interface to manage VVOL aspects. First thing to do is add your storage systems. So whether you've got one, 10 or 50 storage systems, you go ahead and add your storage systems through a dialog here, depending on the model that you have. Once storage systems are onboarded, next step is to create the storage container. Uh, the storage container maps to a resource group in Attachee terminology. Uh, this particular storage container has two pools uh, that are defined. And uh, once you have the pools visible, then you go ahead and create a capability profile for it. So before we talk about the, the capability profile, let's give you a peek at the capability schemas that are available. So from a capability scheme perspective, these are the capabilities that Attachee currently supports. Uh, we provide capability on performance, availability, cost class, and then you see the, the various values that we have for those different capabilities. So from a performance class perspective, we can advertise tier one, tier two, and tier three IOPS capability and so forth. Uh, we also have uh, additional type-based capabilities where customers want to have user-defined capabilities such as data location or rack location or availability zone or whatever custom capabilities you want to add can be added as, as well. Uh, on VM compliance, uh, we, we enable VM compliance. So in this example here, if certain policies are defined on a VM, uh, the Apache Bash provider will pick up that particular policy and enact storage changes to match that policy. So for example, if the policy had a tier one IOPS and tier one latency, uh, we would pin that VMDK to the topmost tier in the storage container. Uh, conversely, if a VM is no longer important in the environment, uh, you simply change the policy to tier three IOPS and tier three latency, and we would pick up that change and ultimately tier it down to the lower tier. And we get various other combinations in between as well. So let's look on capability schema. So we mentioned uh, after you create the storage container, next step is to create the storage capabilities themselves. Uh, this one is already defined, but I'll give you a peek. 
uh, what it looks like here. But we also give you ability to define capabilities, not just in addition to the pools, but also define specific capabilities for specific MDK. So for example, if you wanted certain uh, locations for your swap vvols, you can basically set a policy where all your swap vvols would land. So for example, swaps uh, generally not that important. So you put them on tier two uh, and give them, put them on a certain cost class that, of storage you want to have. So now our storage container is created. So within the vCenter, you go ahead and register the VAS provider. So now the registered VAS provider, it would now be visible here. And obviously once it comes online, you'll see the storage systems or multiple storage systems that that VAS provider is managing. Create VVOL data store, as you saw in the other standard hands-on lab deck. It's here with the various virtual machines that are currently deployed on this particular infrastructure. Uh, from a storage admin or, or vSphere admin perspective, you can also see the information from the storage container screen where we provide visibility to actually individual vVols and the particular storage volume or mini volume that's associated with each of the BMDKs. For example, this Cassandra database has three BMDKs, a uh, particular resource is consuming right now, and you can also get visibility to the storage policy that's been assigned to those particular databases. We also provide visibility to VMFS, uh, so customers that leveraging both a hybrid of VMFS and VVOLs. We can actually define profiles for VMFS data stores as well. Kind of a subset of what we provide for VVOLs, uh, but certainly decent capability. The next topic really is around storage policies. From a storage policy perspective, I have a quick peek at this storage policy. So. So again, from a storage policy perspective, you have placement and replication capabilities, which you saw on the main lab. Uh, we provide various capabilities that can be selected depending on the application services that you're supporting. From a replication perspective, uh, we set up the various uh, remote storage locations, what type of uh, replication technology. Uh, we want snaps both locally and remotely as part of that policy. So speaking of replication services, let's have a quick peek at that implementation. So again, as we mentioned, we're going to have VP VAS provider on site A. We're going to have a VAS provider on site B. Uh, we use OpsCenter Protector as our orchestration software for replication services. So it provides a very reliable, robust way to manage multiple data centers and replication services. So right now that your VM is has been created, it's Upcenter protectors taking those VMDKs and replicating them from site A to site B in that environment. As I mentioned, currently in beta. So within the VAS interface itself, you're going to find an object called replication groups. Uh, replication groups basically defines a policy between a source and target. In this case, here we've got two policies that replicate from storage container A to storage container B and they have they're using asynchronous replication in this case and they have some remote snapshot policies that are defined as well within uh, vcenter so let's just go through a sample of creating a vm or cloning a vm and just give you visibility to the policy management aspect of that so let's just go ahead and clone So once we get the cluster assigned, we we'll come to the storage policy screen. So here's where we're going to select the particular storage policy. So, so again, by, by classifying them as gold and silver and bronze at this point, uh, it makes it easier for your customers to make a selection. So we can select either gold one for tier one performance. Gold two is actually vSAN services. But in this case, we'll use tier one performance on external SAN vVols. And once we select the policy itself, uh, this will come back with a compatible data store, which is this particular VVOL data store is compatible, and also a list of replication groups that match that policy. In this case here, we'll select this replication group. Hit next and next. Um, so now this VM, once I uh, click finish, it's going to create those three VMDKs that were part of that particular VM. And once the VM is created, it will 
start to apply the replication policy on. So now that VM is deployed and running, we can go back to our storage container screen. And if we look at the volumes themselves, we'll see that the, the VMs have been created, our hands and lab volume, and also they're currently being replicated. And if you want to see visibility to the replication services themselves, you can pop into the up center protector screen. So in this case here, you'll see that we are VASA is currently replicating to Jupiter 112, which is a remote targeted location. And we're currently doing some replication services on those VMs. And if you saw back on here, so hands on lab VM uh, was this set of volumes that was being replicated as part of this hands on lab VM, which was uh, created earlier. So here we see, looks like this could be completed. We have a look at the volumes that are being replicated. So currently there's uh, eight volumes that are being replicated. And here you'll see a list of volumes, many VMDKs have been replicated. And if you recall, our hands on lab VM was using these set of volumes, 21, 24. And now these VMs are, the VMDKs have been replicated successfully to the second site and they're keeping a, a near zero RPO that environment. So that's a quick peek at the replication services that we have. Next, we're going to talk about VCF and containers. So from a VCF deployment, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation and it was customers deploy uh, storage, both primary principle and supplement storage. And when customers are using Hitachi VVOLs in an environment, uh, the device is to deploy the VAS provider into the management domain. And then you will connect the individual workload domain vCenters to that VAS provider as part of the implementation. And again, through VCF, you'll see some integrations uh, happening between VCF and VAS provider to make this even more seamless going forward. Uh, now after supplement storage and very soon principal storage for VVOLs, can support those workload domains in that environment as well. Container perspective, uh, we support containers with virtual volumes. And uh, here's a link to a very good paper on deploying uh, persistent storage with containers across both VVOLs, vCenter, VMFS in that environment. And we leverage the Hitachi VAS provider and storage classes to ensure those volumes get the various capabilities that can be deployed in the environment. And if you want to do a a test of that, you can certainly use something like PowerShell. Uh, here we have a list of policy and environment. You can use a new VDisk to go create a particular VDisk in environment, and this will go create a first class disk on the VVOL storage container. Okay, uh, I think the last topic I think was around uh, migrating from VMFS to VVOLs. The general advice I give there is once you have your, your VMFS data store, So here we got a set of VMs on the Victor data store. Um, I'm going to select one of these VMs here and look at this policy. And so the best practice to migrate this to VVOLs is update policy. Um, so in this case here, we're going to change the policy to our replicated services. Now again, we could just chose to move to VVOL and without replication services. Let's try that. And we update the policy. And so once the policy is updated, uh, next step, then you just might do a migrate function. So we just migrate the VM, change storage. Then we don't need to select the policy because the policy is already defined on the uh, the VM itself. So let's pick that this VVOL is compatible with that policy. It wants to apply it to that VM as part of the migration. We simply select next and finish. Now that VM will get migrated onto the VVOL data store and uh, Tachi Bash provider will apply the policy, whether it's just a tier one performance policy or tier one performance and replicated policy as part of the deployment. Again, this was a kind of a short flyby on the Tachi Bash provider and some implementation specifics. Uh, for additional details, please consult that quick start guide and or uh, the longer video on this topic. Thank you so much.